Why is it that Queen Elizabeth class aircraft carriers feature a straight deck design instead of an angled flight deck? After all, it was the British who invented the angled flight deck. The answer has less to do with how aircraft land on these carriers and more to do with how they launch. There are three types of aircraft carriers. Catapult assisted takeoff, barrier arrested recovery or catabar, short takeoff, barrier arrested recovery or stobar, and short takeoff, vertical landing or stovel. All American supercarriers use the catabar system as airplanes are launched via catapults and recovered using arrestor wires or barricades in case of an emergency. While the catabar design is the most expensive, it has two major advantages. The first advantage has to do with the amount of payload that can be carried. Airplanes launched via catapults can carry more ordnance and fuel. Increased fuel capacity translates to increased range for the aircraft, which means that during conflicts, airplanes can be deployed from farther distances, keeping the carrier less vulnerable to enemy attacks. The second advantage of the catabar design is that it doesn't limit the carrier to airplanes with sophisticated technologies like vertical takeoff and landing. You can even launch low-power aircraft such as E-2 Hawkeye or C-2 Greyhound. Aside from American carriers, the only other aircraft carrier that currently uses the catabar system is the French Charles de Gaulle. However, both China and India plan to utilize the catabar system on their future carriers. Under the short takeoff barrier arrested recovery system, aircraft launch under their own power with the help of a ski jump. During landing, arrestor wires are used to recover the aircraft. The stobar system is cheaper to build, operate, and maintain. However, a major limitation is that only specific types of aircraft can be launched, the ones with a high thrust to weight ratio. Additional limitations of this system include reduced takeoff weight, which result in a shorter flight range, reduced number of sorties compared to catabar system that utilizes catapults, and the need for the carrier to maintain a speed of at least 20 knots to generate the apparent wind speed needed for aircraft to launch. Currently, Russia, India, and China utilize the stobar system. It's worth mentioning that both catabar and stobar systems use angled flight decks for two simple reasons. One reason is that it allows for simultaneous launch and recovery of aircraft. The other reason is that in case the aircraft doesn't catch an arrestor wire, it can take off again without crashing into the other aircraft parked in front of the carrier. Missed landings and subsequent crashes were a big problem for the World War II aircraft carriers that used a straight deck design. Finally, with the Stovall system, aircraft take off from a small runway with a ski jump and land vertically. In order to land vertically, the aircraft first has to match the speed of the carrier, slowly move sideways over the carrier, and then land vertically. The use of this landing technique eliminates the need for an angled flight deck and greatly frees up space. But that said, there are major downsides to Stovall aircraft. This type of aircraft is more expensive to produce because of their vertical landing capabilities. It is also more expensive to operate and maintain due to their increased complexity. Stovall fighters are also severely limited by both takeoff and landing weight. For example, the F-35B carries 33% less fuel than F-35A. Moreover, Stovall jets are slower, less maneuverable, and can pull less Gs than conventional fighter jets. F-35B and AV-8B Harrier II are the most famous examples of jet aircraft capable of short takeoff and landing. Both are in fact capable of vertical takeoff as well. However, it is not practical, as vertical takeoff would severely limit the amount of fuel and ordnance that can be carried. Stovall aircraft carriers are the most common type of carriers in the world, as they are much cheaper to produce. In total, there are 14 aircraft carriers in the world that operate Stovall aircraft. The United States operates nine amphibious assault ships which are technically equivalent. Spain has one, and both the United Kingdom and Italy operate two each. So why did the Royal Navy build two of its latest carriers with straight decks? Well, you may say that's because those new aircraft carriers operate Stovall aircraft, so they don't need angled flight decks. And that's true. But why would the Royal Navy operate more expensive and less capable F-35B Stovall aircraft instead of using more capable and more affordable conventional F-35Cs? 
The reason is not what you think. Queen Elizabeth class aircraft carriers were designed for F-35 Lightning aircraft, which has two carrier variants, F-35B, which uses Stovall, and F-35C, which uses Cadobar. But because it was unclear which variant of the F-35 would be used, the class was designed to accommodate both, and this meant that catapults had to be included in the design, and they were. Both HMS Queen Elizabeth and HMS Prince of Wales were built with all the structural bracing needed to fit catapults. In 2010, while HMS Queen Elizabeth was under construction, the British government announced that it was looking to fit at least one of the carriers, if not both, with catapults. That would allow the operation of the F-35C, which also meant that a resting gear machinery and an angled flight deck would be needed. Traditionally, aircraft carriers used steam catapults, but in this case, there was a big problem. While steam catapults were invented by the Royal Navy, they could not be fitted into Queen Elizabeth class carriers for the simple reason that they do not have steam engines. Instead, the carriers are powered by gas turbines and diesel engines, which produce over 100 megawatts of electricity. And this meant that only electromagnetic catapults or emails could be used on Royal Navy's new carriers. But another problem was that back in 2010, emails were still an experimental technology. Not only was it expensive, it was also quite unreliable back then, and even now. Emails are currently only installed on USS Gerald R. Ford and are still considered less reliable compared to legacy steam catapults. So due to reliability concerns, a price tag of more than 2 billion pounds per ship and increased delays of entering service, in 2012, the British government reversed the decision to install catapults and other upgrades and the Stovall plan was put back on the table. But will we ever see catapults or angled flight decks installed on Queen Elizabeth-class carriers? Well, we probably will, for a few reasons. As electromagnetic catapult technology matures, it will get both cheaper and more reliable. Additionally, all the space to install the required machinery already exists. In addition to that, Queen Elizabeth-class carriers are expected to remain in service for 50 years, meaning that at some point in time, they will undergo midlife refit. Lastly, the rise of unmanned aerial vehicles or UAVs requires both catapults and arresting wires, which means that an angled flight deck would have to be retrofitted. In 2018, an F-35B pilot made history when he performed the first ever shipborne rolling vertical landing, which is similar to performing an arrested landing in slow motion, but with no arresting wires. A big benefit of rolling landing is the ability to increase the landing weight by 2,000 pounds. That said, you need to have a pilot with mad skills and precision to pull it off. So until retrofitting their latest carriers with catapults and angled flight decks, the Royal Navy will make the best of what they got and will continue pushing the envelope of what is possible.